Okay. Uh, welcome to Guyan in Web Browsers bi weekly call for 14th of July 2020. Uh, this week on our agenda, quick update about pinning services, a uh, quick update on subdomain gateways, uh, performance improvements for uploading web UI and in general over HTTP clients. Uh, IPFS desktop update extravaganza and more. That was me reading over agenda. I thought I'd try that. So uh, yeah, uh, the first item is pinning services. Um, feel free to add uh, your agenda items while I go over this one. Uh, let me quickly share my screen. Uh, background here is that we are working on um, a generic pinning uh, service API that uh, pinning uh, service providers can implement. And then uh, clients can easily switch between providers without uh, the, like while using the same uh, user interface or the same uh, client. Uh, so now we have this pinning service API um, draft. It's a very simple API. Um, the pin object lifecycle is just creating, modifying, and removing pins. Uh, we've uh, tackled uh, problems related to a pinning service, uh, fetching new data from peers that are um, behind uh, NATs and uh, in other restrictive network topologies uh, by adding those provider hints uh, to the response. So now client uh, has an information that, hey, this uh, is a multi other of uh, pinning service. You should connect to it. And that way, uh, pinning service is able to find the content faster. It does not need to wait for DHT. Um, and uh, we've removed a bunch of uh, fields and replaced them with a meta uh, uh, dictionary where uh, vendors can add their own uh, parameters, which are like, bound, like specific to their functionality. So it's uh, open-ended spec. Uh, every pinning service implements the minimum that's in this uh, document. However, they are free to add as much as they want to uh, the meta parameter. So the list is listing pin objects is pretty simple. Uh, by default, we only return uh, pinned objects, I believe. Um, you can uh, filter by status or you can pass multiple CIDs and you will get a pin status only for that CIDs. Um, pagination is built in and we have some hard limits uh, for the number of uh, results uh, that are returned. It's about 1K of results. Um, user can add multiple pins in a single request and then uh, can get status of a specific uh, single object and then can uh, modify that pin object, uh, add additional metadata or uh, change uh, providers or even CID. Uh, that may be useful in our case for web UI integration where uh, in case we implement um, pinning policies, uh, the root of MFS would be a pin that is constantly modified on every MFS change. And finally, uh, when the pin is no longer desired, uh, you can remove it. Uh, that's it, that's entire API. Uh, so I posted uh, links uh, to this work in progress spec um, in the notes, but I believe uh, by the time people watch this video, it will be more or less finalized. We already don't expect too many like groundbreaking changes. Mostly uh, we may specify additional limits for uh, value ranges, or we may uh, move uh, some like optional fields to be promoted to be mandatory, but nothing uh, uh, too extreme. Uh, so we encourage people to uh, visit uh, visit this repo. Uh, after you uh, familiarize yourself with uh, this spec in existing shape and feel that something's missing or something's not clear, feel free to 
uh, open issue or even uh, open a pull request uh, making a direct change, propose direct changes to this spec. We, uh, the source of truth is this YAML file here. It's an open API uh, format, uh, which has a very simple uh, docs in the beginning and then it's uh, just an API spec. Um, I believe that's it for my part with um, the API. Uh, we hope to um, effectively uh, finalize the spec this week. And by that we mean um, we will give a green light to pinning services to start implementing it. And of course we will uh, probably gather feedback in the next few weeks when people start implementing the API and uh, like hi hidden uh, complexity uh, surfaces uh, will probably uh, continue work in that repo. So if you are a pinning service provider or are interested in, in this space, uh, you may want to uh, watch this uh, repo. Um, that's it for pinning services. Uh, I'll quickly stop sharing my screen in case there are any questions, concerns, something I've missed. Spec re looks really good. Uh, it's a really difference between two weeks ago and right now. Looks very professional. I like it. So it's a good job on that. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> I would um, like I to. S oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, no, I was literally just saying I want to see your cat. <laughs> oh, he's here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, what I was going to say. Oh, uh, Molly had some concerns about the uh, sign up process or connecting the pinning service API. I tried to explain uh, how that came into being, but I'm not sure I had uh, much success in convincing that it was a good idea. Uh, yeah. So I was wondering, um, yeah, just wanted to bring it up, I guess. Yeah. So, um... I think we will descope that from this like finalization process. And effectively, um, what we want to finalize is uh, the, the part for uh, related to authorization is already in the spec, which is that um, uh, authorization bearer token. Um, and we start MVP with assumption that there will be this copying step. However, I'd like to uh, continue thinking about this. Uh, if it's something, we, if we like in the next week or two come up with something fairly easy that uh, pinning services can implement without uh, too much burden and something that works with both web UI in web browser but as well as um, inside yeah. of Electron browser in uh, IPFS desktop, uh, then we may. Uh, add it as additional option. But I don't think we will have a bandwidth for anything more than just like small porcelain change on top of existing thing. Yeah, so I, I think the implementation should be fairly easy given that we sort of not do anything. However, I think most concern still was that um, flow itself was not easier than copying pasting uh, tokens, uh, which I think is a different issue. Yeah, uh, I think uh, like my plan is to uh, leverage the fact that more pinning services will look on this spec after we uh, call it finalized. And we could uh, have an open PR which adds that one endpoint uh, you described uh, with clear uh, like pros for adding this. And if we got like enough thumbs up from pinning services that this is actually something that makes their job easier for like managing permissions. Uh, we may be successful with that, but I, I will uh, okay. leave the decision on this uh, to uh, pinning service community um, at this point, because they will be the ones who implement it. And uh, I don't want to uh, balloon the scope too much if they are not yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. 
Cool. Uh, apart from that, uh, there's a separate discussion in the web UI repo uh, regarding stats. I filled it today uh, in the mockups of web UI settings screen. We had a column for transfer and storage per uh, pinning service. Right now in the pinning service API, we don't have any endpoint for fetching uh, stats like usage stats. Uh, and I just proposed to scope that from MVP. Uh, I just mentioned it here uh, in case uh, someone feels strongly about it, but I don't feel it's that useful to users, um, especially like given pin different pinning services may have different uh, billing strategies. So we may not uh, come up with the proper way of visualizing, like showing visual way of uh, utilizing different services, especially if they have a different uh, pricing strategies. I may have uh, one may have um, billing per uh, storage, another for per transfer or something else. Uh, so I would this propose I propose the scoping that from MVP. Um, so if anyone has any strong opinions on that, about uh, that, uh, there's the issue which I'll link later. Yeah, I think we, we just need to make sure that we run that past the folks who generated those original low-res mockups. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, just uh, for additional context, I'm uh, meeting uh, Juan uh, today for like a final design review of the API spec, and we'll bring that up as well. Uh, awesome. So, yeah. I mean, I think I think really within within the UI mockups, that was just to <laughs> that was just to give us an affordance for columns in that space. Um, I don't you know I don't feel like it's any wasted work, um, but I, I would be very interested in keeping tabs on that. I think there's going to be some sort of statistical information on a per pinning service provider that will be useful to people. I just don't think we know what that is yet. Yeah, absolutely. I I think it's better to uh, hide those columns. We can always bring them back later. Um, all right, a quick update on subdomain uh, gateways uh, in case someone was missing that topic. Um, two interesting PRs got merged this week, past week. Uh, one is support for ED2519 uh, lippy 2 keys in subdomains. Uh, that's good news because uh, we are planning to switch to uh, those uh, inline keys in next uh, releases of GoIPFS and this enables us to use them uh, in uh, subdomains which means uh, IPNS websites uh, would uh, have a proper uh, and valid TLS cert on public gateways. And we do that by uh, defaulting all subdomains for all lip 2 p keys um, to base 36 instead of 32. That buys, um, buys us uh, enough uh, space to fit in under uh, DNS limit of uh, 63 characters. And the second uh, PR is, uh, oh, and uh, in case CID is too long, even in base 36, uh, the subdomain will return an error. Uh, for now, uh, effectively, if you use like longer hash functions, uh, like SHA-512, uh, um, that may be the case, but you are still able to load that content from a path-based gateway, um, which is under uh, localhost IP or ipfs.io. Uh, you just don't, uh, you are not able to uh, use uh, long CIDs for uh, use cases uh, like websites where you need a per CID origin isolation. Um, yeah, so that's on, uh, on the uh, keys in subdomains. And the second PR is uh, extended support for uh, reverse proxy headers. There are two popular headers. One is X forwarded uh, port, which we already supported that enabled uh, uh, reverse proxies uh, at public uh, subdomain gateways to redirect to HTTPS uh, out of the box. And now we support uh, X forwarded host header, which enables subdomain gateways to redirect to different host names. And that's useful if someone has already has a path based gateway, which was using used uh, mostly for uh, websites and now wants to add uh, origin isolation to uh, to users, uh, give them a clear migration path 
just set up that header on the reverse proxy and uh, Go IPFS will automatically return redirect to a new, um, to the new host name, uh, to the subdomain at that host name. Um, and that's uh, it on subdomain gateways. Um, any questions, concerns? Cool. That's a kitty. <laughs> All right. Uh, directly, do you want to uh, talk about uh, sure. uh, w yeah. upload improvements? Uh, yes, I guess I should have named it differently. Um, so I do. We did had a meeting last week uh, with the core implementations folks uh, about the implementation strategies. We had to decide between doing fully browser native implementation versus somewhat that. Uh, we decided to do somewhat native, and maybe in the future we will reconsider that decision. Uh, there's a pull request to a JS IPFS. Uh, that implements based on that implements the decision. Uh, it's end up being fairly big because uh, some of the complexities in the IP, JS IPFS APIs. Uh, it's currently waiting on a review. Uh, there is a little chance that some changes would have to be made for the two, which is uh, maybe we'll switch to the fetch blob implementation versus the uh, blob implementations that I included in the pull request. Uh, problems are is fetch blob has bugs, so that would mean we would have to fix some of those. Uh, other than that, I think it will be ready once we get a review. Um, and once that happens, uh, then I'll update the pull request that is currently there for a web UI, which is my fork library, uh, and it will just replace with JS IPFS. And I think once that is also done, then we'll have it. That's it. Seems that we will have everything in place uh, and we'll be waiting for pinning services to implement API. That's a good news. Um, yeah, that, that, I, th I think that's uh, that, that's a valid uh, route for for landing this. Um, I know um, Alex. Actually, is, yeah. Actually, I, I recalled one thing that I should have uh, captured. So I do have a problem with my web UI pull request that I was not exactly sure how to solve. That is, uh, it seems that I think there used to be some things that track the progress of upload. Uh, and it rendered it, but so there are some actions emitted by the uploading thing. Uh, my implementation actually does a progress handling and emits those actions, but there's nothing listening to those actions except to when it's done, uh, which is fairly bad when you have multiple gigs of files. It takes uh, quite a bit, I think 14, 40, uh, 14 seconds uh, was a uh, time so having no visual feedback for 14 seconds feels like things are broken um, uh, all you mentioned there there were some things that removed it and then i guess it got lost and some of these things were left off so I'm, I'm not too familiar with the code base so i'm not exactly sure where to wire things where so any help there would be helpful uh, so i think we need that sorry, sorry. Uh, my laptop was also talking. <laughs> uh, so um, I actually did uh, did uh, f upload feedback uh, a couple of weeks ago that you have a drop down that appears from the bottom and shows the progress while updating the files. And that oh, drop down maybe. is listening to the, let me check. Uh, it's it's waiting on the files actions, I think. Files. Uh, Rafael, where, where did you post it that? Because I don't see it in the... So when you upload something to the files page, it appears and it's mm -hmm. called file upload, file. Let me just check. Uh, may, maybe let's do it offline because it would be easier so I can actually go and... Yeah, I, I can say... I can send you the um, the link on GitHub for the for the code, and you can check it out over there. Thank yeah, you. thank you. That would be very helpful. Yeah. If you have any issues, you can also ping me on Slack. And I'll I'll help you out with any questions you have about the code base. You're oh. welcome to do it. That will thank also you. help you 
help you go faster and also improve my knowledge on the code base. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, actually, if you'll have a time and don't mind looking at the pull request, that, that would be helpful to, to get a sense whether it looks okay or not. And maybe that's where we can discuss those details so it will be in the right context. Um, sure. I'll, I'll ask questions in there to you. Thank you. Cool. Sounds we not only will have fast uploads, but we also know that it's happening. <laughs> Yeah, I hope it's not bug. Remember, I told you that uh, Redux Bundler was bug, and I couldn't actually see the up update. So I I mm -hmm. hope it's not the case anymore with this change. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I hope it's the way it is right now. Only because it never worked. It was just zero and then one hundred percent because it like buffered the entire thing and no one bothered with proper uh, progress until now that Iraqi fixed it. Um, all right, uh, IPFS desktop update problems. Never so just, <laughs> just to keep everyone on the same page, uh, we had a couple of issues appearing last week's about uh, problems on IPFS desktop upload, uh, sorry, update. And I think me and Lytle found the problem and fixed it, but that will only work from this version onwards. So just keep in mind that any issues that will appear while we haven't released a new version, it's probably related to that. However, I'm going to release a, a new version as soon as I finish the, finish the grooming my my final pull request on the on the pinning settings. Uh, and after that, we just ask feedback again for the users, just to check if everything is updating properly. But I really think that once we have the time after pinning services, we should really dedicate some time into update because I think this is the kind of features that are bugs in this case that we can lose users due to. If they get really mad about updating issues, they will just stop updating or stop using the app. So I think this, sh this should be like a, a B0 after we finish pinning. Just, yeah. just my two cents. Yeah, definitely. And uh... Just to provide additional context, uh, we had a, a bunch of different issues with the bundling tool we are using right now. We are using uh, Electron Builder, which is like, yeah. not, like it's used, but it's like not the, the this standard thing. It's something people use if they want to support more than uh, the usual suspects. And it, it's a long list of issues we had over the years and uh, moving away from that tool, plus uh, probably moving away from GitHub releases and uh, leveraging IPFS uh, for both uh, distributing, storing and uh, checking for updates uh, would, be, would be that. Because like if we, if we change this, we should change to something that uh, leverages IPFS as to, to the like as much as possible. Um, yeah, uh, for the, this specific bug, I think the, the, the one you described was mostly uh, the Windows one, uh, which was a problem for users who installed uh, uh, IPFS desktop globally uh, as an admin in, like globally for all users on the system. And I think there's a bug in the Electron Builder where if you install the app that way and there's an update, uh, the update operation will uninstall the app. So that's that's interesting way of uh, breaking your app. Uh, the good thing is like if you reinstall it, I think the data is still there, um, but it was like annoying to Windows users, especially people seem to install uh, stuff globally for some reason. Yeah, I try. I tried that like five times, and I couldn't replicate it. And maybe it's because I only have one user, and maybe they have more than one user. That's why they choose that option. Uh, I'm, I may be trying to get like, I maybe I'll just create a guest account and try it afterward, see if yeah, I can I'm, replicate. I'm a little bit like skeptical when it comes to trying to reproduce anything on Windows platform now. Like it was easier when you had like Windows Seven, Windows something. Now you got <laughs> Windows Ten, but there are like dozens of Windows stands and they change random stuff between them and it's 
now it's even ridiculous to it's hard to tell which uh, build user was uh, running um so that's like a struggle and electron builder is not helping um i agree after ping services we probably should bump that in priority um all right uh the next one is ipfs pinning on settings page yeah so let me just share my screen over here share screen um kitty stop come on what are you doing <laughs> sorry about that so can you see my screen here properly there is a yep. so this is the settings page so far just to quickly show you what's going on so um i i kind of want to fix some accessibility issues with the table for some reason after i did the accessibility fixes the table now has some weird focus stuff that shouldn't be happening like for some reason i need to discuss if i click on this row should i also open the three icons menu over here should, no it shouldn't be a thing okay nice <laughs> so after that uh, so these sections aren't doing anything right now but they they are kind of coded that way there's a possibility to add the action but so far the only thing that we can do is add a service uh, once we have the um, the pinning API providing the um, the list, we can also have some URLs over here, or some custom actions to add a pinning services, a pinning service instantly. But for now, we can add a custom one. I'm just finishing the UI and uh, liming everything and spacing and whatnot. But we can just add a custom pinning services over here, and we also need a link for the learn how. Right now, we're just linking to the home page. Uh, some, yeah, some links we, we can forget that'll, about. Like... That'll go for, that'll go to docs. We haven't written that yet. Um, but I can figure out what the URL will be. We can at least put that in there. Yeah. But so far, it's a bit, a bit slow, the progress I'm getting, but almost there. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, I think we can focus on, on other parts of pinning services like integrating on files page and whatnot. That's it. Yeah, uh, some uh, some updates uh, on uh, like the settings aspect of pinning services is that last time I talked with Adin, uh, we recognized the problem of storing uh, API secrets in uh, IPFS nodes config. Um, and we already have, um, uh, like a, a convention of uh, not returning uh, private keys uh, when you read uh, config over API slash v0 config endpoint. Uh, effectively, the screens, uh, the settings screen uh, in uh, web UI will be reading uh, uh, pinning a services map from the config um, and the way it will work it will be possible to write um, the secret, but it won't be possible to uh, read it from API. So uh, web UI will be effectively uh, always like overwriting the key, but it won't be possible to leak the key uh, in case there's a problem. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm still not sure about um, details in like the fields that should land in the config uh, namely the like the icon um, like right now we got just endpoint and the secret uh, i'm not sure if uh, the icon should be in that map uh, namely because um, if you add a custom one um, I think that's a separate, like <laughs> that, that's the perfect bike shot. It's like a tiny thing that everyone will have an opinion. Uh, yeah. The thing is, if we want the providers to uh, like just do a pull request and add their own configuration there with, with us just testing and making sure everything's okay and all good to go, uh, they should be the ones providing the icon as well, right? Yeah, so or I was I thinking know? about... Um, so I was even thinking about adding uh, like an info endpoint where pinning service could provide all those additional uh, things like link to their own docs 
link to their uh, like user mm -hmm. onboarding uh, web like path on their website and uh, CID of their logo. Uh, but that's uh, yeah, I'm not sure if we want uh, to persist all of that in in the API. Um, but that's like a separate separate discussion. It's, so a question: If yeah. we if we want the providers to give us a CID, we need to make sure that CID is persisted on the public gateway, right? Uh, yeah, like uh, or we assume that CID will be fairly popular, and there should not be a problem <laughs> with fetching okay. it. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking about making a tool that just makes those kind of requests for the public gateway and just update, upload a file there and just That's post how it people to the public abuse gateway. our gateways, <laughs> not give people ideas. <laughs> it's a secret tool. <laughs> it's a secret tool. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> we shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> All right. Um, we are, I think, it, I think it's fine. We are, we will uh, probably uh, be ready for pinning services when they land. I will quickly give a quick highlights of stuff that landed. Oh, great. Um, so I have this thing when I share a screen, I'm not able to hide the Zoom interface. <laughs> and it's, I think it's on Linux problem. I'm not seeing it though. No, it's, 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 it's on everything. Overlays. Yeah, we just we just can't we can't see it, but it's it's bound to be over the thing you want to click on. Yeah, it's, yeah. Happened it's to the most too. frustrating thing because people don't see my struggle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I think uh, new IPFS desktop landed um, with the auto update fix that uh, Rafael mentioned. Um, worth mentioning. <laughs> Um, oh, and by the way, I think there's uh, a more recent version of Web UI here. I think we shipped uh, 2.10. Uh, hmm. I that's think a good so. question. Yeah, so that's like a secret Easter egg there. Um, I, can, I can edit the release if that's the case. Yeah, it's a, no, no problem. Uh, and we shipped IPFS Companion to the stable channel. Uh, it's cool for two reasons. One, it got approved by Google within two days. And the sec second one, <laughs> and the second one is that it got a huge revamp. Uh, uh, Jessica redid entire main menu. And now it's, it does not take your entire screen and it shows you much more. Uh, personally, I, re I liked those uh, copy elements which now show you what you will be copying. Um, and we save uh, a bunch of stuff uh, um, in size. Um, a bunch of language tweaks in both uh, main menu and uh, preferences pages. Yeah, two, um, two things of note here. One, I believe this actually represents us ripping out every extraneous use of the phrase web UI, aside from one space on the preferences page where it actually makes sense, the download leaning edge web UI, and then we qualify what that means. So um, after three years, I think we were finally able to close that issue about not referring to web UI as a thing. <laughs> um, also, this opens up space for, um, we, we have a, a longstanding contributor PR where for DNS link sites, you get two additional um, copy links for the immutable versions of the links. And I believe this should open up enough vertical space to actually get that into production. And you can also, that landed in the previous release, but not, not, people may not know, you can click on the cube now and it will give you the welcome page. And we also don't say web UI here, which is cool. So uh, that's available in both for, both for Chrome and Firefox. Interesting fact. Uh, Google changed something in the way they calculate stats. We had uh, over 30K of users, and now we have just seven. Um, and it's still unclear why the 
rapid decrease of users. I checked it. I've been looking at it for the past two weeks and we are growing around like uh, between 50 and 100 of new users each week after this drop. Uh, not sure why. Uh, maybe Google fighting with uh, bots. Maybe we got uh, uh, some fake users which uh, pretend to use multiple extensions. No idea. Uh, that's not the only problem uh, people had with... Uh, it's not the, uh, just us having this problem. Multiple people raised that issue uh, on forums. So, uh, yeah just thought i'll mention that in case people wonder why 20k of users uninstall typeifs companion um i think we also landed audio's case study i i'm not sure if we talked about this on this call but i think jessica if you could like briefly mention it yeah um i i can i can show it to you on my screen but really just click the link it goes straight to the docs um we are commissioning a series of what I'm calling like 10,000 foot view case studies um, that don't get so deep into the technical weeds, but are really geared towards showing somebody who's interested in whether they want, oh, thank you, whether they want to use IPFS, um, you know, how that might fit into their overall tech stack or, or just their, their overall metaphors for their project as a whole. Um, so really focused on the value that IPFS and, and only IPFS was able to provide to Audius. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a series of these. Um, they will live canonically in the docs, but we'll keep them in our pocket to use uh, particularly social media and in any future revamps of the ipfs.io site uh, next on tap i believe our open bazaar fleek and iotex i feel that will be super useful resource for people because it's often uh takes a bunch of time for uh giving people examples of what they could build with ipfs and having like actual products uh telling in their own words, how they leverage IPFS is much better way of. And this was, I mean, this was the number one area when we were doing surveys of missing bits of documentation where not only was there a need, but we were providing absolutely nothing. So here we go. Yeah, now we provide something. <laughs> cool. Uh, I think we've run a true entire agenda. Any other topics? Uh, I, I forgot to mention one thing, uh, Lytle, you had a concerns about the testing of the changes to JS IPFS for the multi-part stuff. I added some tests to try to address it. I wrote a comment. It would be good to hear your thoughts after that, whether they address it or do we need to find a better solution? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, like mm, context here is, uh, I, my concern was uh, we are improving this uh, performance of uploading files over um, HTTP API. Uh, but the risk is that at some point in the future, maybe this performance gain may be lost to to refactor or something. Uh, so having some sort of a regression test is useful. I'll probably won't look at it today, but I'll try to log some time uh, this week. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Uh, folks, I think we will end this sooner. Uh, I'll stop recording now. Uh, see you in two weeks. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.